What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna oil paint. Roll the intro. Roll the intro, come on. What are you waiting on? They wanna see the show, let's go. When evening falls, hidden colors that avoid bright sunlight appear. Violets and blues paint the shadows with their cool hues, and vibrant green leaves warmed by the sun begin to fade with the light. It is a time of quiet when the world slows down, giving us a chance to breathe. In this painting I am crafting for you today, I'm hoping to capture some of that calm beauty. I hope everybody is doing all right today, and in this episode I'm going to be sharing with you some of the techniques I use to create a landscape painting, and how simple it really is. Now for this landscape, I took inspiration from three different photos. The sky, the small manor on the hill, and the great tree all come from different photos. As an artist, you should never limit yourself to just painting straight from a single photograph. By combining the best elements from different photos, you can take a boring idea and craft it into something amazing. As you have already been seeing, I start my landscape with a strong underpainting. This will make laying on the values later so much easier, and the colors of the underpainting will also strengthen the tones and colors I layer on top of them later. I mix the colors of the underpainting with a combination of fast drying medium and solvent. The colors come out like a wash when I apply them to the canvas and they stay transparent enough to preserve my pencil sketch. Now we move on to the block end phase of the painting. For the blue in the sky I mix ultramarine, cobalt teal and burnt umber to gray it down. The purple in the sky is done with quinacridone magenta added to the blue mix. And the orange is made by mixing magenta, lemon yellow, and a small amount of burnt umber. After the sky comes the distant hills, which are the same mix as the blue in the sky with more ultramarine and burnt umber added to make them darker. When you know how to mix your values correctly, you don't need black to darken a color. As we reach the plane of the painting with the hilltop manor, I add more magenta to the blue mixture and more yellow to make it warmer. I paint the hills and the trees that come after this plane with mixes of blues and yellows so they become green and darker. The river is the same blue mixture as the sky. Water usually reflects the colors of the sky like a mirror. After the river, I continue on blocking in the shapes of the landscape and establishing my values. I keep the elements of the landscape as simple shapes and silhouettes for now. and I keep to this pattern even as I block in the great trees in the foreground. Too many details right now will ruin the painting. I must stick to only building my values in depth during this stage of the painting. Now we move on to my favorite stage of the painting, the detail layer. I add a mixture of lemon yellow and titanium white to strengthen the sunset and use some of this mixture on the nearby clouds before I glaze the mixture over the layer of dry orange to get the light really blazing. I 
I darken the clouds to make the sunlight brighter. And I paint the edges of the nearby clouds to make them glow more. For the hills near the sun, I apply a glaze of burnt sienna to make them warmer and highlight them with a mixture of cobalt teal and lemon yellow to keep them in a more bluish range of colors. I move on to the next plane in the painting and lay down a darker base color for a grove of trees. While the color is still wet, I paint on the base shape of the trees with simple upside down U strokes. I blend out the bottom of these strokes into the darker color and rough out the tops to make the shape of the leaves. I pop on a few highlights with cobalt teal and lemon yellow. and I add trunks here and there with a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine. For the field, I start with a mixture of violets, greens, and blues. I then paint on a mixture of umber, teal, and lemon yellow to make a simple grassy texture. There's no need to paint on every blade of grass. For the cliff face below the manor, I start with the base of magenta and burnt sienna. I paint in the silhouettes of the trees on top of the cliff, around the manor, and behind it. For the mid-tones, I add lemon yellow to the rocky mixture. and more white to make the highlights. For the shadow side of the cliff, I mix teal and umber to make a gray reflected light. For the manor, I'm using the same colors as the cliff face. I take the shadow colors to make the windows and details. And I add white and yellow to the rocky mixture to paint on loose highlights to give the manor a stony texture. Now I'm taking the highlights on the grassy field and the surrounding trees to the next level so I can create dynamic shadows and a cone of light leading the eyes of the viewer deeper into the painting and into the sunset. With the color of the grass and the trees reflecting into the river, a few lines of titanium white mixed with umber and ultramarine are all you need to get this water flowing. Fewer details are always better. Now I move on to the final stages of the painting, the creation of the great tree in the foreground. This tree starts like every other tree I've shown you in this painting so far, but here I'll use my darkest tones and values.
Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of myself painting the bark on this tree. I thought I was recording when I really wasn't. But in the future, I plan to make another video which will go into greater detail about how I paint trees. And in that tutorial, you'll get a better look at how I paint tree bark. So stay tuned for that. With the tiny figure in place, I lay down my signature and it's time to move on to the next project. Alright everybody, we got another good paint done. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you get all the notifications. And y'all have a good one.